academia is a funny place. <laughs> I think most of us would agree with that. Uh, academia is also a place where, just like in regular society, trends happen, right? Um, things become sexy. Um, right? I mean, so different clothes phase in and out of style, different musical artists, um, different colors, different foods, whatever, right? I mean, things rise and fall in popularity in most aspects of society. Academia is no different in this. Um, with academia, for the most part, instead of particular clothing styles, although those have also shifted, right, with like the standard for what a professor has to wear to give a lecture, things like that, you know, have changed over time. This is not an <laughs> indictment of academic uniforms. Um, in academia, though, what we have are kind of sexy, trendy, topical theories, buzzwords, discourses, tr topics, right? I mean, so what it is, you know, really interesting and exciting to deal with and engage with shifts over time. Um, currently, interdisciplinarity is is on the rise, right? It's it's seen as, you know, the solution to a lot of problems, right? So, getting meta again, it's currently fairly popular in some sets um, to work toward, you know, the pop, the pop academia, the accessibility piece, um, or cross-disciplinary or topical bounds or whatever. Um, so, I'm part of the trend. Um, <laughs> but, I tend to think that those two particular trends aren't bad things, <laughs> and I would love for them to stay permanent trends. Uh, there are, though, also more perhaps dangerous, not dangerous, but uh, sometimes dangerous, um, concepts, trends, discourses, buzzwords, whatever, you know, that can legitimately cause problems, right? Um, so you get kind of this notion of hegemonic concepts, um, you know, ideas and ways of thinking um, you know, that constrain all researchers, right? And, and this is one of, I would say, like a major trap actually to properly actual original research uh, and, you know, constraining researcher thinking. Because, um, you know, uh, academia is not this free world where you explore whatever you want to, you know, outside the bounds of funding and, you know, what your institution's willing to have you look at, um, what you've been trained in, you know, these kind of things. Um, so you'll see in international relations departments across the United States right now, there are a lot of experts on things like Russia and the Cold War, right? Because when they were doing their PhDs, that's what was going down, right? Like, that's what people needed to know about. Today, generally less useful, but in, you know, 15, 20 years, we're going to have a heck of a lot of academics who know various things about the Middle East. There's a lot of funding out there for it right now. There's a lot of interest in it right now, right? Like, you've got an American generation who have kind of been shaped by, you know, the Middle East being, you know, kind of the, you know, global focus of international relations. And that kind of thing. Um, same thing in medicine uh, and philosophy and any, any kind of discipline, right? Like, things come up that are really, really exciting or interesting. New innovations happen. People, you know, kind of jump on that bandwagon, right? So this could be called the bandwagon trap, I guess, as well as the hegemonic concept. Maybe that's a little more accessible, less turkey. <laughs> um, Anyway, so we get these buzzwords, these buzz topics, um, these dominant discourses that really, really become hegemonic and shape the kinds of work that we do. Um, you also, deeper than what's like sexy to look at, is dominant ways about how we look at it, right? Um, so the Middle East right now, most of the research is being done from a security standpoint, right? I mean, that is a dominant hegemonic concept trap that most academics fall into. Right. It's, and part of it is in the framing, you know, but the way things are framed, like even if you're a crazy liberal peace and justice scholar, you, know, you, you have to kind of fit into this, you know, securitized Middle East, you know, a dominant framing in academia. And, you know, that starts to constrain your thinking and it starts out being, you know, like I have to speak, you know, according to these buzzwords and this guideline in order to, you know, like make my message heard. But, you know, you keep writing that and thinking like, or you keep writing and talking about it like that, and it starts to become how you think about that, right? I mean, so these really do start to settle into our fundamental awareness of how we deal with the issues. Um, so there's certainly this trap. This, I think, would say is definitely the hardest to push against. It's the hardest to see. It's kind of the most ingrained. It's the one that gets into our brains, Right? I mean, it's very much part of, like, actual, like, intellectual hegemony, you know, from the ide ideational power kind of side of thing. Hard to push against, but we got a name and shame, I guess, really. 